When it comes to helicopters, the world has seen just about every combination of rotor blades going. You've got your vanilla single, that uses a propulsion source on the tail to counteract the torque, generally another smaller rotor. You have twin rotors, that allows greater lifting force to be applied, and also counteracts the torque problem by having the rotors rotate in opposite directions. Similarly, you have coaxial rotors, and in an almost logical extension that is generally being applied to many lightweight UAVs, you have quad rotors. And, of course, you have the triple rotor. Okay, not quite so popular nowadays, but for a brief period, the biggest helicopter in the world used three rotors. The Sierra W11 Air Horse. Sierra is little remembered now, but the company's namesake, Juan de la Sierra, invented the first autogyro. This type of aircraft uses an unpowered rotor with free auto rotation to develop lift, while forward thrust is provided by an engine driven propeller. The most famous example of an autogyro that most people would likely be familiar with is Little Nelly from the James Bond film You Only Live Twice. La Sierra was killed in a passenger plane crash in 1936, somewhat ironic as he had been the test pilot of dozens of his experimental aircraft. And though the Sierra Autogyro Company had some successes making limited numbers of their various intriguing machines, the Second World War saw the helicopter, in which the main rotor is driven, pointing the way forward in rotary aircraft. So the Sierra Company, which was funded by the G&J Weir Engineering Group and so survived the demise of its namesake, set about creating designs that they hoped would give them a piece of what seemed to be an expanding pie. A range of experimental aircraft were built to test different ideas on the most efficient way to utilise rotors, and this culminated in the two-seat W9. This rather innovative design used what we would now call a NOTAR system, in that to counter the torque from the main rotor, instead of using a tail rotor, the W9 vented hot air out of the long tail boom as a controllable jet exhaust. The W9 was lost in an accident in 1946, but Sierra had already moved on and identified the future need for helicopters with a much larger cargo and carrying capacity than those being built. Hence, development began of the air horse. Recognising that the rotor blades at the time were not necessarily strong enough to support heavier loads and airframes, they went with the logical solution of designing the aircraft to use more than a single rotor. The head designer on the project, Cyril Pullen, had already developed a design in 1938 that used two rotors side by side and mounted on outriggers, the W5. This had proven the idea to have good flying and control characteristics, though fore and aft stability had needed improvement and so Pullen opted to use the concept and add a third rotor to act almost like a tail on a conventional aircraft to the much larger W11. Three rotors reduced the load on the hubs considerably in comparison to other designs of the day, and wind tunnel testing undertaken in 1947 indicated that mounting the third rotor at the front of the aircraft provided the best option, with the rotors forming an equilateral triangle. Initially, the W11 was envisaged to be an aerial crane, carrying large loads externally, but with a minimal structure that just supported the cockpit, engine and rotor set. But it was then decided that the aircraft might as well be built with a stress skin design that provided not just the chassis for the rotors, but also act as a fuselage for internal carriage of personnel and equipment. And because British aeronautic development and procurement in the post-Second World War period is just plain odd in a lot of ways, it wasn't the military that was interested in the idea of large troop-slash-freight-carrying helicopters, it was the Colonial Office, which thought the W-11 might make a splendid crop sprayer in Africa. As Sierra didn't have the experience to build such large aircraft, orders were placed with Cunliffe Owen Aircraft for two prototypes. These were completed in 1948, and in December of that year, the W-11 first flew. The aircraft featured a two-man cockpit, with two fold-down seats in addition, should extra crew be required, with the engine compartment behind them, and then the cargo area. 
The engine was a single Rolls-Royce Merlin 24 that produced 1,620 horsepower. This powered the three rotors, which were built of laminated wood and had a diameter of 47 feet each. That's 14.3 meters. These all rotated counterclockwise, which would normally cause torque issues, but this was resolved by slightly inclining each rotor axis to negate this issue in cruising flight, whilst the aircraft's twin tail would allow the pilot to trim and counteract the force when in other flight modes. Cargo capacity was projected as 24 passengers or 1,700 kilograms of payload, around 3,750 pounds. In testing, the W11 demonstrated a top speed of 125 miles per hour, 200 kilometers per hour, and seemed to be an extremely efficient flyer, especially by the standards of the day. The second prototype was completed, and plans were laid to build more powerful versions of the then world's largest helicopter. The first of these proposals would see the aircraft enlarged and be powered by two Merlins, and was intended for the colonial office role as a crop sprayer. The second was to have used two of the new Rolls-Royce Dart turboprops that was then entering service. Either of these would have substantially improved the air horse's power to weight ratio, and made this helicopter even more capable, despite its odd looks, with potential payload being 3 tonnes. But the fact that you've probably never heard of this aircraft gives away where this is all going. On the 13th of June 1950, the first prototype crashed, killing the two test pilots and the flight engineer. Cause of the crash was fatigue failure that led to the front rotor failing. The two pilots, Henry Allen Marsh, who was Sierra's chief test pilot and manager, and John Cable from the Ministry of Supply, were two of the most experienced rotary aircraft pilots in the world at the time, and their loss was keenly felt by the tight community involved in the industry. This tragedy would have been bad enough, but hardly unusual in a development aircraft. However, the W11, despite its potential, was already on shaky ground from a production point of view. Cunliffe Owen Aircraft was essentially moving out of aircraft production already, when they agreed to help build the W11 prototypes and the crash and loss of the first air horse was followed by Sierra's main investor, G&J Weir, pulling out as well. This was followed shortly by the cancellation of the whole project by the British government. In 1951, Sierra was taken over by Saunders Row, becoming in that company's helicopter division, and where, somewhat ironically, it would have some success with designs that were in development at the time of the company's absorption. The other W11, which had only about 20 hours of flight time on the airframe, was scrapped, and that was the end of the triple rotor helicopter design. An idea that, had things worked out a little differently, may well have been a lot less odd looking to modern eyes due to greater familiarity if the W11 had set the standard for heavy helicopters. I hope you found this video interesting. If so, please check out some of the other videos coming up now. And if you'd like to help me keep this channel running, please consider buying me a coffee, supporting me at Patreon, or else maybe consider buying my book. Links to all these, plus to my website where sources for this video can be found, are all in the description. Have a good one, and I'll catch you all again soon.